Hey there YouTube, Travis here, and it is a beautiful day to rebuild the Tomos A35 engine uh, that is on this 1997 uh, Tomos Targa. So for my last video, uh, we went ahead and removed the top end of this engine, took the carbon intake off, and unbolted the exhaust. Um, go ahead and check out that video if this is your first time tuning in. Otherwise, uh, in this video, we're going to drop the engine, rebuild it with a new crankshaft, uh, and then reassemble. We have our treats shipment here today. So at its core, we have a brand new crank because the old crank has that up and down play. We have two 6203 C3 bearings, and we have two seals uh, for the crankcase. Other things worth mentioning, uh, the piston was totally toast that uh, was in this bike. So we have a nice OEM uh, stock A35 38 millimeter piston. We have a new needle bearing for the small end of the crank. This is totally a wear item. So even though the needles were intact on the old one, uh, we're going to replace it. And of course the deluxe gasket set, which not only comes with the top end gaskets, but also the case gasket. And then finally, uh, a brand new set of clutch shoes for the first gear. I believe these are treats house made. They weren't really that expensive and uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw those in. And in total, this ran me just shy of $250 to do all this. Uh, worth mentioning before we tear in, in addition to a standard tool set, uh, I also have the Pook flywheel puller, which I believe will also work for the Tomos A35 flywheel puller. So quick note before we begin, I went ahead and tore apart the top end of this bike to inspect it for damage. Uh, it's probably better to leave that intact because you're going to have a nut on the clutch side and a nut on the flywheel. Um, if you're working with simple tools and just have like a piston stop to break those loose, um, that's going to be worth it there. I'm going to try to use a uh, strap wrench for both. There are also different tools that you can stick. Um, inside, for example, the windows of the flywheel to bust it loose um, or an impact. Uh, don't do sketchy stuff like st sticking a screwdriver through the, the top of the connecting rod to try and, and break it loose. Um, just try and think ahead. So dropping the engine isn't the primary purpose of this video, so I'm going to go ahead and speed through this. But the short version is, so yes, you'll need to remove the pedal arms on both sides. Remember, take the nut off. I don't think it was a 12 millimeter, but just put it back on a couple threads. So when you hammer it out, you don't mushroom the threads. Uh, pedal arms come off both sides. Remove the drive chain. Uh, you can use needle nose pliers to make this easier to squeeze the clip off. Chain comes off. Next, uh, removing the cover for the oil injection drive. Uh, that came off with a little bit of help from the mallet. Uh, and then just a couple Phillips screws that hold the oil injection drive on. Uh, pretty easy to, to remove that. Uh, additionally, that makes a great place to store your bolts. Uh, and next, you know, whatever wiring you have, um, just get it back to the wires that come out from the top of the case. All right, so we've got the wiring, oil injection, um, chain everything off that should be holding this engine on except for the three bolts which are 13 millimeter uh, worth mentioning i'm going to go ahead and fully remove the exhaust just to get that out of the way strategy here will be to undo the top two let this rotate and pivot on that bottom one down to the ground or down to the <laughs> workbench and then remove the final bolt and we should be good to go and that's exactly what happened uh it's something to know is that on the uh, opposite side over here, the kickstand spring is on a bracket that will come off when you take the nut off of the lower engine mount right here. But uh, again, let's go ahead and just get that last bolt off and then we can actually start working on breaking down this motor. Okay, so in the previous video, we took this cover off. So these bolts are just in here finger tight. Remember the one long bolt is right up here next to this bolt. And careful with your shims. There is one right here on the pedal shaft for me, according to some stuff I read online, this could be one or two. One shim right here. 
and then it doesn't look like there's anything in front of the nut right here. But again, these engines were all just a little bit different, so there totally could be. Pay attention when you take it apart for the first time. So now we're at the point where this nut right here, in the last video, I busted this loose by applying a strap wrench around that clutch nut, around the clutch drum, and then using a regular socket to remove it. But in this case, because I've already had this apart, this is nice and loose. We do have this washer behind it and the assembly itself. We'll go ahead and replace this first gear clutch when we reassemble. And it looks like one, yes, one additional shim behind the clutch assembly, but in front of the seal. Apparently it's not uncommon for these to pop out a little bit when you do disassemble, so I'm imagining this actually might have been fine. Um, we'll never really know. All right, we've got one circ clip right here. And we actually have a second circ clip right here. Interesting. So now this whole assembly should slide straight out. That chain kind of connects, connects it in the back there. All right, we're just gonna hold this together here for now and just let it pull straight out. Nice. So from what I've read, the big thing here is we're looking for broken teeth on the first and second gear, as well as any actual splitting. So any, any cracks that are forming on, on these gears, um, chip teeth, all that stuff. And if that's the case, those do have to be replaced uh, before they do any further damage. But these guys are actually looking really minty. So I'm, I'm quite pleased. All right, so going a little further, this they call this the peanut clip online. This allows you to, you know, kickstart the bike by pedaling backwards. We'll just go ahead and pull this right out. <laughs> you can pull the pedal shaft out too. Looks like we've got a shim on the end there. I believe that's as far as we can go for now on the clutch side disassembly. So we'll go ahead and flip over and start working on the uh, magneto side. So there's going to be three Allen head bolts to remove for the magneto side. All the same size. Just some very light prying for this very external cover. There's no gasket or anything behind here. And here we are. Why, this thing is dirty. There's a little drive here for your oil injection. Okay, so again, this flywheel nut, this whole thing is going to rotate with the crank. Once again, easier if you have a top end here to use piston stop or rope, but in this case, we're gonna see if we can get by uh, with a strap wrench. Again, there are certain flywheel holder tools that will hold the flywheel and allow you to remove this nut. Let's see if we get lucky here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go back to my cheater bar here, which is a big old piece of black pipe. There we go. Wow. That was a lot. So now, same problem. This flywheel is kind of pressed on here and we need to be able to pull it out. And this is your Pook flywheel puller, which let's see, hey, hey, it does thread on in here. But again, we get to a point where, I think this is actually also a seven, nope, this is a 19. And just like before, we'll need our friend strap wrench. And in this case, we're tightening to pull the flywheel off. There 
we go. And there's our washer for under our nut and flywheel itself. Now we can get a good look at our ignition. Okay, so there are three Phillips head screws for the stator. This is adjustable. Um, this bike starts up really easy. I'm actually going to mark with a Sharpie between the stator and the case um, where the position is. So when I bolt this back on, it's going to go exactly where it was. Your wiring will just pop out with this rubber grommet right up here at the top. And there is a tiny, tiny woodruff key here. Make sure you don't lose that either. And we have our stator side seal right here. Now, if you wanted to, you could remove the uh, sprocket right here if you're going to re-gear or just replace it because it's worn. You would take a flathead screwdriver, hammer down this bit, take this nut off, and, and this would come off. I'm actually going to leave this for now. Um, I'm not doing a full restoration on this. We're just going to get this thing running and riding again uh, by replacing the crank. Um, so we're going to leave that for now. Go back to the clutch side, and then five bolts are on the inside, and then it looks like at least two more on the outside uh, before we can split the case. All right, so yes, five here, two back here, and these are all the same size. If there's one right here, I'm pretty sure this is gonna have to come out as well, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that now. This is the last one. So that's eight total. Okay, so unlike a Hobbit, which has cases that you need to use a puller on, this one, there's already a little bit of give here, so I'm gonna see if I can give just a couple taps with the mallet here to get these cases to actually split. If you have one of those crossover years where it's an A55 case with A35 internals, there's gonna be some extra meat up here you can get the mallet on to get these apart easier. So I'm working this little bit by little bit and then tapping where I can here with this mallet. Slowly but surely, it's starting to open up. So after going at this for a little bit, we've got a little bit more wiggle room, but it's still not really coming. I am being so careful here, and I am just ever so gently putting the screwdriver in and just rocking it back and forth. I'm not using any pressure. I'm just trying to gently loosen this up. Unfortunately, I am having to wedge something in here, but I am being as gentle as I can to not actually nick anything and just try and work this apart because this motor is sitting on some locator pins. There we go. It is It is starting to come. Just being as gentle as possible. Whoops, that's the crankshaft holding that together right there. Let's try and <laughs> alleviate some of that pressure there. And <laughs> here it comes. The crank is definitely holding on to this here, and that's one of the locator pins that just fell out. Let's see if we can get this just to come the rest of the way. All right, so for a quick inspection here, kind of interesting. There's a little piece of something here. I'm wondering if this is part of the Sprag spring. Um, but the good news is that none of these gears are chipped or damaged in any way. We'll go ahead and get this old case gasket out of the way. This whole assembly looks nice. Um, I mean, the crank, you know, we'll, that's just got that up and down play. So unfortunately, yeah, this, this is bad. We'll go ahead and whack the other side of it with the rubber mallet to get it to, to come out. Other than that, nothing too extraordinary here. I'm gonna go ahead, clean these up with some carb cleaner or brake cleaner just to get this, this gunk off. I've got some engine degreaser also. And then we'll go ahead and start with reassembly. <laughs> and 
definitely seeing a few more pieces of what looks like the spring here. And in case you're curious for a bit of a close-up, again, you can have some side-to-side -side play, but this has that nice up-and-down play. So this is now a piece of artwork uh, for somebody out there. So before we remove the bearings, we will have to get these seals out of the way. I've got this nice plastic tool here to pry them up with, though you can probably totally get away with using a screwdriver as well. Clutch side seal. And I'm gonna eat my words. I was able to use this nice plastic tool to remove the uh, clutch side seal, but this stator side seal is stuck in here, something fierce. So I'm just going to very gently, 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 not touching the actual surface of the cases, but I'm just going to pry ever so gently with this screwdriver, just going in just a little bit, not all the way to the cases. And that's your stator side seal. All right, so nothing fancy, just 10 minutes or so of hitting the outside of the cases with the engine degreaser not trying to impress anybody just trying to get the stuff to not be covered in dirt and grime on the outside i think i did okay this was a pretty clean break there's not much case gasket lingering actually not any that i can see at all on the inside of the cases there is a tiny bit of base gasket most of it stuck to the cylinder um, so when you go ahead and get these mating surfaces clean, there's no substitute for a razor blade and just taking your time and going slowly and getting all that material off. Don't use any power tools. You will mar the mating surfaces. Just go slow and get everything to be nice and free of the old gasket paper. One call out here, there is a washer. This is the clutch side, you can tell because of the peanut indentation right here. There was this extremely thin shim washer that was on the crank bearing like that. Um, again, you know, yours may or may not have this. Um, pay attention when you split the cases. When I reassemble, I'm going to uh, include it and we'll go from there. These bearings are just about flush uh, with the cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up. Heat makes things expand. Cold makes things contract. Heat up. Uh, the area around where the bearing seats, and then we should be able to gently tap them out to remove them. So we have our old friend here, Mr. Pook Maxi Seat Post. Any socket that's probably about this size of the inner bearing race will probably work pretty well. I'm go ahead, and we're gonna use the torch. Heat the outside area here. Oven mitt for safety, flip us over, seat post, mm. there you go, bearing is uninstalled. We'll repeat for this, but I'm going to put a little piece of wood right here so that we're not hammering down super hard on the, on the sprocket. There we go. Bearings are uninstalled. Now the reassembly is going to be very similar to disassembly. I'm going to heat the area with the torch. I actually have both the bearings inside a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Personal opinion, the heat is going to make much more of a difference than the freezing, um, but they'll be nice and cold. So hopefully these drop down all the way and become flush with the case without issue. But if not, again, our friend, Mr. Pook seat post or a piece of pipe or socket that is the same diameter as the inner race of the bearing. All right, let's get to it.
Well, gang, that was not the smoothest install, but it is in there now. I'm not gonna touch that till it cools down. Let's go for bearing two of two while it's still cold. This one I feel okay hitting on the, the ground here because that surface is it's pretty flat. <laughs> much better and it's all about getting that case really really hot i totally could have put these in a toaster oven too and, and probably had a similar effect that one dropped in real nice all right so our bearings are in and now we get to move on to assembling everything else we've got things to think about like our case gasket this little shim that was on the clutch side which again look for the peanut for the clutch side uh part of the the crankshaft we're gonna do the seals after we install the crank. Um, so again, everything's nice and cooled down so I can touch it. Uh, viewers note, I went ahead and took some time and took my razor blade and really went around and cleaned up all the excess gasket material here. So keep things in mind here. We're gonna do one part of the crank first, then we'll put the gasket in. I'm gonna start with the clutch side here. So we have that shim that was here. We'll go ahead, add that shim, which sits perfectly over the inner race of the crank. For the crankshaft itself, the side with the splines on the end is the clutch side. And again, this Tomo stuff, it's really just press fit. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide this down. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit back and forth. It'll go into place right there. So there it's, it's installed. As we're playing around with this here, make sure the crank stays here um, not and doesn't swing left or right or else that'll mess you up when you go to reinstall. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> okay. So now we'll go ahead and overlay our gasket. And actually, before we do that, I really am in the spirit of not forgetting about things. We have our two locator pins also to install. I'm gonna go ahead and put these at opposite sides of the case. So here, and then also up here. So before we set our gasket in here, we're gonna pour a little bit of two-stroke oil into a cap, and we're going to coat both sides of the gasket with two-stroke oil. On the off chance you have to tear this apart again, this will make it a lot less likely to stick to the cases. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this gasket here in the front just so that it can stick flush to the case here. We'll go ahead and trim the rest of it once the halves are together. So now with both sides of the gasket lubed, I'm gonna very carefully push the magneto side on to install it. I'm trying to keep that crankshaft in the combustion chamber. So this fresh crank does not want to go on super easy. Um, I tried giving it a few taps with the mallet to kind of close the gap, but I don't really want to be wailing on this thing too hard. So we're going to see if we can use these screws to, to pull us together here, if this is going to be close enough to, to properly do that. Okay, new strategy. So I went ahead and flipped the cases over so that the clutch side is facing up because that's where the bolts go in. Went ahead and grabbed a couple longer M6 bolt just to get us to be able to kind of close the gap here. I'm going to try and do this all very carefully as to not mess anything up, but I do need these two cases pulled together. So these bolts are too long. They're bottoming out in the case and I don't have any in between bolts, but I do have a million washers. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. This is really crude, I know. Okay, so it turns out, you know how a Sax 505 has these nice long Allen keys. You need Allen keys in the front, and then you can use some regular um, 
bolts in the back, um, you need these really thin M6 washers. Okay, many washers in place now. So now we can go ahead and start tightening these all around. You'll hear some pops from the crank, but that's okay. Just make sure the connecting rod is in the right spot. Whew, it's a lot of work. I, I'm gonna be bummed if I have to take this apart and do this again for some reason. Okay, there YouTube. Well, I had to step away from this project for a few hours and come back to it because it was so frustrating. Usually it seems like when people put these together, they kind of just go on real easy. It doesn't seem like people, once the bearings are in the cases, are doing anything like putting them back on the oven or heating them up. This really does seem like a press fit kind of thing. Ultimately, we are 99.9% .9 of the way there. You get to watch me put a couple more cranks on these case bolts to bring it all together. I wish I had some better bolts to work with. Ultimately, what I ended up doing was, again, these are Saks 505 case bolts with a ton of M6 washers on them. That got me enough to bridge the giant gap, went around with this one, these two hex bolts in the back, and then a whole other one of these. And that got me pretty close to where I was able to put the factory short Allen head bolts in here. And now we're finally at the end going pretty slowly, working again, star pattern, just like you tighten anything else. And you can hear the crank as you have, tighten them together. It's making some noise and that's expected. Like that kind of noise. So we're just doing a little bit on each one. Okay, that's the biggest thing about the torque spec here. I'm trying to feel this out for around six or seven foot pounds, but really we just want to get this even. Anyway, now we can go along here to seal installation. In this house, we grease the inside of our seals with just some high temp grease, and then we'll use Moto Seal on the outside of our seal to just really, really drive it in there. Um, whatever you're going to use here, no matter what, must be resistant to oil and gas. Nearly all of these Permatex brand items aren't. Uh, RTV is not. The general black and red isn't. But uh, if you see one that is, like Moto Seal, go ahead and grab it. Seals, uh, you know, when I took this apart, they were spring side in towards the crankcase uh, from the factory. So that's how we're going to do it here. Grab us a little bit of some grease for the inside. And we're just gonna gently get us just a just a, a little dabble do ya moto seal on the outside. Really just enough to coat it. Again, this is just for good luck. It is totally optional, but that's what I like to do when I install seals now. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and press this in to get all this stuff off my fingers here. Let's press this in till it's flush. There you go, there's your nice new seal. We'll wipe away the excess here. All right, now for the clutch side seal, same procedure. Just try and get that pushed on in there evenly. a little bit more moto seal than I probably should have, but that's okay. So now let's go ahead and start putting some of the transmission bits back together. All right, a little more zoomed in here for the transmission side reassembly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back in the order it came out. So your pedal shaft here with the shim on the end of it, sliding in first. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and put on the, uh, again, this is goes in the peanut sized hole right here, this clip. But we push this all the way on and then that will lock in uh, with the similar sized uh, gears on the other side. So this will go ahead and sit in there like this. Now we have our chain connecting to our first and second gear here. I'm gonna briefly pause here. Something I didn't show in the video, but I went back and did before I finished assembling the motor was install a new Sprague spring. Um, mine was smashed to bits inside the engine as we saw. Uh, and some people on the internet consider this an optional item inside of a Tomos engine. Uh, there's a really great YouTube video out there that was published quite recently uh, that explains why this is not the case. Uh, I was inspired by that, so I went ahead and ordered a new Sprague spring and installed it. It's pretty easy. It wraps around the back of the larger gear and rests against a pin here. Uh, I really recommend you do the same. They're like a $9 part. This will also just go on like this. And those gears, there's actually a tiny bearing in there. We're looking for those to go straight in. Like that. There we go. Look at that. And go ahead and reinstall this bushing. And then friends, forgive me, I should be replacing these circlips. I don't have new spares on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall these. Nice, smooth operation here, nothing binding, nothing feeling weird, I like that. Now for the other side here, let's go ahead and reinstall the stator. Just like it came off, our rubber wire grommet slide right up there. We have our three screws. Do the top right one first because you actually have to rotate the stator to get it to stay in place nice. And it looks like our Sharpie marks, mm, the one survived on the left. That's good news. I went ahead and put this on earlier. It's not a Woodruff key, it's a Woodruff pin. Um, that goes on there, and I'm going to try and line up this flywheel the best I can with it. That goes on right there, and then we've got washer, and then our funny nut that has the two prongs on it for the oil injection system. We'll just do that finger tight for now, and we'll worry about really cinching that up once we have the uh, top end on. For now, actually... Move your crank around. And it shouldn't be binding. It shouldn't be like really hard to turn this, but it's not gonna be super smooth either. These are brand new bearings and they need to find their way just a little bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the clutch pad change out. This is the $33 set from Treats. So I'm gonna briefly describe what we're gonna to attempt to do here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the clutch, which again, it's got these, you know, chewed off bits. It, it is intact-ish. If you were in a real pinch, you could probably run it, but while we're in here, we're going to do it. We're going to put a thing through it. We're going to put one of these things. This is a piece of a busted off axle. It's really great that I kept this, huh? <laughs> um, engine stud and just a, an eyelet that I had hanging around. And we'll clamp these because we don't care about these. And then we're going to use two pairs of vice grips. And I actually went out and bought a brand new nice set of Milwaukee uh, needle nose style vice grips. Um, this is because I never, don't have these. Um, but we'll have two sets of vice grips on this and then two screwdrivers. And the idea is we're going to uh, take the spring off, put the new pieces on, and then use the screwdrivers to force the spring back into position. There's actually not any other videos about this that I've found. A lot of people seem to skip this step. Uh, and Treats does sell a tool, I believe it's $63 or $64, uh, that is similar to a factory tool. Um, it has a piece that goes through the middle, so you can clamp on, kind of like we're going to do with our, our stud or, or our eyelet. 
Um, and then it has just this, this tapered uh, nub and you turn the tool around and it'll push the spring in. Um, some people really like the tool. Some people say it doesn't help all that much. Um, I decided to try and do this on my own with, with stuff we have hanging around. So we'll see, uh, see how it goes. So here's our axle nuts, really firmly tight in the vise. That's not going anywhere. And here is our first gear clutch. So I'm just gonna set this down in there like that. It'll rest. Now we can work with this here. So I'm being careful with the channel locks here. I'm not going for like crazy He-Man strength here. I just don't want this spring to go flying if we can help it. Okay, first time here. So let's, uh, let's give this a go. I think this should be kind of similar to changing a, a tire on a moped, going in little bites. So for now, we're just gonna try and get this off of here. All right, well, there we go. And then we've got our other vice grip here. Okay, so removal of the spring was not that bad. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that just like this. So now there are some additional um, some they call them springs online with these these kind of flat bladed pieces here that sit on top also. Okay, there's our first piece. The old one has a pin here. I'm gonna try and get out, switch over. All right, I'm gonna super briefly pause here and talk about the pins for the first gear clutch. Uh, they're not symmetrical, so they'll stick out more one side than the other. Uh, I'd recommend getting them all facing the same way, and I'd recommend doing it from the factory setting, which is uh, they're more recessed on the side that has the large wraparound spring. Um, just something I noticed as I was reassembling. Well, now all the springs are out, so we'll just do this from the ground up, I suppose. Okay, after much finagling, pads are all on, the pins are in. Now it's time for these spring things. I'm just going to lay them in, have one overlay the next and one overlay the next. I think that ought to be okay. Actually, no, the important thing is that, you know, this rounded top part is where the spring goes around, but the bottom part um, needs to actually go around the bottom lip of the clutch shoes. So I'm making sure that this actually is on the bottom. I think we're back together. Look at this. Wow. Look at that action. So at least that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, again, if you don't feel like doing this, um, you can, without disassembling, there's another video that a YouTuber has where they do relining of these pads using some sort of cork material, and I believe Gorilla Glue. Um, that's been a long-standing moped thing. There's also an aftermarket Treats Jammer First Gear Clutch, uh, which you could buy. I think it's like 120 bucks. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. Okay, enough uh, procrastinating. We need to put the spring back in. I have been looking forward to this part the least. So, uh, just like changing a tube, let's try and get this on as far as we can with just our hands. <laughs> Not very far. Could also use a C-clamp instead of vice grips, but the vice grips are kind of nice to work with. Man, this thing does not want to play nice. Again, I'm trying to be gentle with it. We'll see, see how we do here. I 
Man, this is not very fun. Okay, reset everything here. We've got the spring by hand and by vice grip inside of the two guarded, two of the three sections with the little half moon. So we just got to get it over this last one. Maybe this will be a little easier. Almost need a dang third screwdriver, huh? I just need to get it over that half moon, man. I am so close. Let's rotate the spring so the part where it connects is right where that half moon is. Maybe, maybe that's the thing that my monkey brain is missing. And turns out it was. Oh my goodness, look at this. Our spring is reassembled. If we undo these vice grips looks like it is mostly in there so those springs weren't perfectly inside the groove this one is and I moved this one to be and then this is the last one it's kind of riding on top of the keeper springs so I'm just kind of working my hands trying not to pinch myself and then using a screwdriver to get this to snap in place nice in there. I'm gonna to try to get those in there before reassembly. There we go. Look at that, it's sitting in there nice and flush. So we're gonna speed through reassembly here, just like we did with dropping the motor. Uh, remember for the transmission side, there's the two shims that stick on the end of the shafts, and then there's the one that's under the net for the clutch assembly. I'm also going to take care of these rusty studs. They were such a problem when we disassembled the motor. I'm just going to clean them up with some sandpaper. Hey, they came out pretty good. I'm also going to clean up the threads on the end of the studs. I could replace the studs. Uh, these threads weren't terrible. I was able to run just the tap uh, down it a couple times just to get them cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and hone the cylinder because it had that damage uh, from the piston. Um, this cylinder actually cleaned up pretty nice. So we hone it and then we clean it out with brake cleaner, carb clean. Uh, gonna go ahead and get all that old base gasket off, uh, no matter how long it takes with the razor blade there, just to get that all nice and clean. Um, man, there's some skunk on there. Yeah, it actually came out pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Of course, we'll clean up the exhaust port as well here uh, before we do reassembly, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with how the cylinder came out. There's our new uh, needle bearing, which we're going to go ahead and install uh, in the connecting rod. Uh, you lube it up just like the base gasket with some two-stroke oil, uh, and then we're almost ready to assemble the top end. And that roller bearing in there, that looks so good. Piston installed, lube up the wrist pin, install the circlips, arrow pointing towards the exhaust, of course. Get the rings to match up with their locator pins, and then go ahead and use some nimble fingers, and we're going to go ahead and slide our cylinder back on. Trying to be gentle here. It actually went on relatively easy. Um, if you have to force this, you're gonna bust some rings, but this went on really nice. There it is. Our motor is actually looking like a complete engine again after all this time. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the head nuts, torque them to spec. And finally, we're ready to reassemble. I went ahead and put the intake on first, just because it's really hard to reach those bolts uh, when it's cradled uh, up in the, in the frame. And now we're ready for our first start. All right, it runs, it lives. This is great. Uh, I'm really happy that this build started up. We still have some ways to go. Uh, we need to get it to start easily and to idle. I have some suspicions. I did a pretty rushed job of blocking off the oil injection on the intake, uh, so for sure there's an air leak there. But we're gonna stop it here. That'll be the subject of the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed the ride. Uh, this was my first time rebuilding a Tomos engine or any two-speed moped engine, actually for that matter. Uh, and I learned a lot along the way. Hopefully you did as well for when you go to do your engine rebuild. All right there, YouTube.
Until next time.